So critics and fans are once again divided by 2019's blockbuster hit, The Rise of Skywalker. They did it again, they made another Star Wars movie no one can agree on. The Rise of Skywalker is the second directorial effort of J.J. Abrams and now the third installment of the most confused trilogy since The Hobbit. My nerdy little heart is broken. Man, I don't know how to react. I've been cutting off hands, hating sand, and killing younglings since the day I could pick up a lightsaber. What am I supposed to do now with my $200 lightsaber? God, I spent my entire savings watching these movies. I've got nothing left. That's it. I hate JJ Abrams and I hate. Ow! Stop being a drama queen. Right, enough of that nonsense. The Rise of Skywalker has got a lot of issues, but I ain't going too deep into any war. As per the Star Wars tradition, this movie looks like a fucking painting. 50 years ago, they'd have no chance of pulling off some of this stuff. They couldn't even do it 20 years ago. Whoever's decision it was to bring back the bloody Death Star should get a raise immediately. I have no idea how it survived this. But crikey does this set look gorgeous. A lot of the bits and bobs in this film do somewhat help to tie the non op non -op Oh, screw it, the nine films together. The film's got a cracking cast as we know and some of them do a great job. Adam Driver could play a black limbless dwarf without anyone noticing, Harrison Ford could make a statue cry, Daisy Ridley's fine, John Boyega pulls off his signature scream, <coughs> and Oscar Isaac is, I don't know, in it? However, watching this movie is like swimming through a sea of fan service. It's so clear from the plot to the fact that J.J. Abrams was brought back by Bob Iger, the man who insisted on more fan service, less controversy. So how on earth has the Rise of Skywalker scored just a measly 54% on Rotten Tomatoes from critics, yet 86% by audiences? To answer that question, we have to ask another, which is very relevant to Hollywood in 2019. Why don't critics and fans agree anymore? Well, to start with, what critics and fans look for in a movie is pretty different. However, most of the time when critics give the thumbs up, so do audiences. That was until... So what is it each party is looking for? Critics look at a film more objectively than mainstream audiences do, but what does that word objective mean? To view a film objectively, personal feelings have to go out the window. A good example of this is the controversy surrounding Luke Skywalker in The Last Jedi. Objectively, the arc Luke follows is symbolically solid and meaningful, however to view this subjectively as a Star Wars fan, this version of the character betrays the one we know and love. Critics also feel for the pacing and structure of a film more so than a general audience. The Rise of Skywalker throws two movies worth of material into the first 20 minutes. While audiences may feel they're being pulled through the story by a rope attached to a car, critics will know to attribute this to the pacing. A quick side note, pacing is also where the Netflix is the Witcher really suffers. A lack of pace left critics feeling like this. Where critics and fans differ the most is the amount to which fan service contributes to how good a film is. If a moment pleases fans but fails to serve a character's arc, the plot, or simply logic, it does not resonate with critics. The Rise of Skywalker is stuffed full of these moments. Not only is it Disney's fault, but also J.J. Abrams' style of narrative. The mystery box. You got the droids, they meet the mysterious woman. Who's that? We don't know. Mystery box, you know. Then you meet Luke Skywalker, he gets the droid, you see the holographic image. You learn, oh, it's a message, you know, she wants to, you know, find Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's her only hope. But who the hell is Obi-Wan Kenobi? The mystery box! According to Abrams' original three-hour cut, not only is Rhea Palpatine, Finn Force-sensitive, Leia actually the one who saved Ben Solo, but Jaina and Lando are father and daughter as apparently the only few black characters have to be related. If you're going to open the mystery box this many times, sure you'll end up with a ray gun or a wonder waffle every once in a while, but you'll also get a ton of M1 grands. Making the whole narrative depend on the landing of these big reveals, especially ones which were literally chucked in the bin in the last movie, is setting up the Rise of Skywalker to fail. According to a recent Reddit post I found, link in the description, Disney were happy to mess up episode 9 for the sake of the bigger picture. I think it's therefore fair not to attribute all the blame to our boy JJ, and it's apparent that he wasn't given the creative control he was promised. The mayhem behind the camera is what likely gave us a film that critics did not enjoy. The director, I repeat, director, had literally not seen the cut that was screened at the premiere. Companies need to keep the hell out of creative control, they do not belong there. When you give a creative the support they need, it's been proven it rakes in positive reviews and fat dollar. Although saying that, this trilogy collapsed from the base and I don't think anything could have saved The Rise of Skywalker from being a disaster. But speaking more generally, creatives should always be the one deciding what their movie will be. But what do you think? Would giving directors more creative control stop these divisive films plaguing the screens? Would it have saved The Rise of Skywalker? 
an important question for another time.